This is gonna be extremely controversial. Most of the time when I film, when I film a fishing video, I don't think I've ever had much more than 20 bucks in baits. I really don't think bass fishing is that expensive. Like at its core, bass fishing is actually, it's actually very simple. It's not very complicated at all. And it doesn't take a lot of money or a lot of tools at its core. I know that's gonna piss off a lot of people because they're gonna think about all the things they're immediately gonna to go to electronics and all the new advances in fishing. They're gonna say, dude, you're crazy. What do you mean? Bass fishing is expensive and boats and rods and reels and lures. But I'm gonna prove it to you in this post. And matter of fact, I've actually been proving it all year long, even in my tournaments and even in these videos that bass fishing doesn't really have to be complicated. I proved this on this channel without really saying so. Don't ever really use very expensive rods. Even uh, even the rod that I'm rigging up right now, it's, it's like a uh, $159 rod. This is my signature spinning rod. I've used it in almost every video that I've shot all year long. From my tournament vlogs to fishing off the bank, kayak fishing, $20 rod. I mean, not a $20 rod, but a $159 rod. I know everybody in the comments, this is gonna really upset a lot of people, but $20 is really about all you need in baits. Of course, a lot of the tournaments, I have a lot of tackle, but I don't really have that much variety in tackle. Every, that's what I've challenged myself with in almost every video. When I plan out a video for YouTube, the things that I think about is, all right, I wanna to try to catch as many fish as possible, the best quality fish that I can catch with two baits, and I try to keep it under, under 20 bucks. And so a lot of times those videos are videos of me filming, fishing like a shaky head, a drop shot, one or two hard baits that are usually affordable hard baits. They can be a top water, very simple setup. Start off with just a plain old shaky head. You already know the one it is. SMH heads from Z-Man. This is an eighth ounce. It's very rare that you'll see me fishing like $100 swim baits or anything like that. Like, I, I honestly want people to feel what I feel when on the water. I, I don't know what to think anymore. I'm having fun. That's literally my goal in this is like, so viewers and people that are new to fishing can feel what I feel and realize that like, you don't have to have the same kind of boat that I have. I would love for everybody to own a 20 foot Falcon like what I have, like, but literally like what I'm setting in now. I know that's not realistic because I didn't start that way. I started in a 12 foot aluminum boat that I used to haul around in the back of my truck. That was literally my first boat. And I had so much fun doing that. That's why you see me a lot of times I'll do kayak fishing. I don't have a John boat, but I am building one, but I'll, I'll kayak fish a lot. I'll go back down to the river and fish out of my aluminum boat a lot. But you can watch, even my last video that I posted, the one before this, I was using a shaky head. I fished three days with a shaky head and a topwater. Matter of fact, it was this topwater right here. That topwater right there is nine bucks. We caught 17 or 18 pounds of bass fishing this guy, Poppy McPopface. And then we caught the rest of them on a plain old shaky head, just a jig head in plastic. It's literally just this worm right here is all I have. Let me see, I'm sure I got it in the boat somewhere. Have you ever thought about how many different ways you could fish just a soft plastic, a swim bait, a straight tail worm, and just some jig head and a couple hooks. Like you can fish that stuff so many different ways. And when I started thinking about even my tournaments that I did really well on, most of the time it was just a simple bait, a simple setup that didn't really cost much. It's like very rarely is it more than 20 bucks that ends up being the reason that I'm successful for the day. When it comes to baits, of course, you could add in rods and reels and boats, and you could, you could, you could add all that stuff in if you really want to get super granular about it, but at its core, it's always something very simple. And it was the approach, or I just found a group of fish that 
made the day what it was. It was never complicated for me. You can get these baits for five bucks. So maybe I even, maybe I even overestimate. I said you need 20 bucks. You probably really, in all honesty, need like five or 10 bucks. Let's just say you want to buy extra, extra bag of plastic, but it doesn't take a lot of money. What happens is when you get into fishing, it's, you're so passionate about it. You start having so much fun that you keep diving deeper into the sport and you want a boat and then you want a bigger boat and then you want a rod and you want more expensive rods. And so what happens is you get more and more deeper into the sport. You dive a, a level deeper and it becomes more expensive. You start spending more money. But I don't know, like you can choose the level that you want to fish at. Do I have to fish for a living? I'm so thankful that I get to fish tournaments for a living because competitive fishing is a part of who I am. I grew up doing that, literally been doing it all my life. But if you ever took away that competitive aspect of fishing, I would still be fishing. If I didn't have the latest Falcon boat, I would still be fishing. I would get in my kayak. I would go bank fishing. I would probably build a John boat. I would go down to the coast and go red fishing. I would still enjoy fishing regardless of if I had this boat. I don't have to have it, but it's, it's nice to have it. It doesn't, I don't need all the complicated things to have fun at this. Do you remember the, the video I did on the budget bass boat challenge? I know a lot of people got upset about that because it was like a $40,000 aluminum boat is not a budget. Your budget is not my budget. The whole point of that video was the tools that I, were, I was using and the things that was on that boat were basically like very simple things. I didn't have an anchor lock trolling motor. I had a very affordable aluminum boat that you can get. Like you can get a, a used aluminum boat, a bass boat, 18 foot boat, probably eight grand, 10 grand. The trolling motor, the electronics, I only use 2D sonar. You can buy a $300 2D sonar unit at Walmart, at Academy, at Bass Pro, put it on your kayak and do the same exact fishing that I was doing. That was the message. That was always my dream that if I made it professional fishing that I, the first thing I did when I won a tournament is I went and bought me an aluminum boat. That was my end game. Somewhere, a bass boat that I could take anywhere I wanted to go on big water. But I always found so much joy, so much. My passion is fishing like these small water places, putting my boat in on a ramp that's nothing, that's not supposed to, you're not supposed to be able to put a boat in there. That's always been the coolest thing for me. So my end game, my, my goal was to work hard at fishing so I could have the types of boats that I wanted to have. And so one of those boats, one of my dream boats was a aluminum boat that I could do all kind of cool stuff with. But with that aluminum boat, you can also go bass fishing. You could catch fish in 40, 50, 60 foot of water with 2D sonar. Nobody's telling you that because it's just cool to talk about live scope and it is a great tool or forward facing sonar is a very good tool to use right now, but you can catch those same fish with very basic tools. I only use two rods. I use two spinning rods. I use some jig heads and a plastic. I actually use like just a knit head, just like that one. And I use a fluke style bait, a Streaks 375. Again, it was like less than 20 bucks that I used to actually catch those fish with. So when I say $20, it's all you need to go fishing. I know that doesn't count the rod and reels, but even with rods and reels, you don't have to get super expensive with rods and reels to have fun. In fact, I just did a video with my son where we fished with a $50 setup, a combo, and I fished with a $500 setup and by the end of the video both of us were fighting over the $50 setup because I, I was actually surprised at how good that rod was and I intentionally wanted to do that challenge I wanted to do that challenge fishing saltwater for a couple of reasons saltwater fishing is pretty harsh on on equipment like bass fishing you know you catch a little two pound bass and that's cool that's cute but really and truly, it's not that hard on the equipment. Salt water just in and of itself is hard on the equipment. The fish are bigger. So you really know what you're dealing with. Like if you got a cheap rod and you try to hoss out a freaking 12, 14 pound, or I know salt water, they say inches, like a really big redfish, you're gonna break that rod. I've done it before. 
but that $50 rod held up. So you know if it'll hold up to that, you can take it bass fishing and catch your two, three, four, five pound bass if you're really good. But even my, my rods that I use when I fish on tour, it's, it's this one. I intentionally, when I designed this rod for favorite, it's my signature series rod. I intentionally wanted to do it in the six stick series because it was cheaper. There's some rods that favorite makes that you probably could argue are better than mine. They have a hex series, it's like 400 bucks, a rush series is 250 bucks. But I, I like, I know that's not really who I am. Until I started fishing for a living, I didn't have really good rods. Um, I had a lot of cheaper rods. I, I never spent over $150 on rods of my own money. And so when I decided to, to start doing my signature series rods, I wanted to do something that anybody could buy or something that I would have used when I was just coming along before I started fishing pro. And so that's why I did it in the six stick series and they're 159 bucks. I have three of them. I have a spinning rod. I have two bait casters that I designed for cranking, which is my all time favorite way to catch bass is, is using a crankbait. So even that is not that expensive. You can get you know, a good spinning reel for this rod. This one's expensive, but I've used cheaper ones on here. Favorite has a good one that's under a hundred bucks. Like a hundred, so you got a $250 setup that you could use to do absolutely anything from saltwater fishing to catching bass, spotted bass, drop shot and small mouth, uh, skipping wacky rigs, shaky heads, whatever you need to do that's finesse, you can do it with that equipment. And like that doesn't cost a lot of money. It really doesn't. I know it's probably, people are probably wondering like, why would you make this video? Uh, especially being a professional angler and, and fishing out of very expensive boats and having what people perceive as the best of the best. In some kind of weird way, I, I get it. But I just think people, I want people to feel what I feel, dude. Like I've had so much fun fishing. I'm so thankful for the things that I have. Like as I have some of, I have like the world's coolest job. My job is literally number one to go fishing and, and figure out how to catch fish from a competitive standpoint. And then also I'm kind of taking it upon myself to, to teach people to fish. I love teaching people to fish. It's like this, it's, it's just like winning a tournament for me. When I teach people how to fish, how to catch fish, it feels exactly the way it does when I have a good tournament day. Like when I have a good day on the water or when I catch a five pounder, it's like this little dopamine burst. I, I just want people to feel what I feel. I didn't always have this equipment. I started out with equipment just like everybody else did. I didn't have any money, just like everybody else did. And I just build one block in front of the other block and here 20 years later things are what they are everybody that is willing to put in the work they deserve to feel at least what i'm feeling when i'm out there on the water that's the reason that i created my straight up fishing school is just so i could teach more people how to fish when i was transitioning between fishing for a living and my day job is I was a I was a fishing guide. While I worked as a fishing guide, I realized how many people just needed a little bit of help. And helping people learn how to catch fish, it gave me like this really serious sense of fulfillment and joy of just helping people catch fish. Like I would take people fishing and I would think we would have I would take people fishing and I would think we would have like this not that great day. Be kind of disappointed and apologizing about how well or how how not well the fishing went that day. And people would be like, oh my God, we've never caught these many fish before. And I'm like, dude, we caught seven. I really just wanted to kind of keep perfecting the art of, of teaching people to fish and just helping people too. Some of it is for me and, and a lot of it is for, you know, for the anglers too, but I just wanted to keep teaching people how to fish. So I created Straight Up Fishing School where, uh, where you teach people how to fish. Really what I'm trying to tell you is it doesn't take as much money as everybody's making it sound like on social media these days. 
just realize like challenge yourself get a $20 bill even if you go fishing online go online say look I'm going to find all my lures and all my tackle with 20 bucks today and I'm going to fish with that for this month I really think you'll number one you'll have more fun you realize that a lot of the things that we talk about in this industry are kind of all hype and at its core fishing is very simple and you can do a lot with a couple of jig heads a couple of soft plastics and maybe a few hard baits that that you like and that work for the body of water you fish and i really think you'll see your fishing improve spend your energy spend your focus on the actual act of understanding how bass fish, that's not popular. Anytime I do a video, anytime I do exclusive content on just bass behavior, there's not quite as much interest. But the moment I talk about some type of bait tweak, something like that, people kind of really love to hear that thing. But I'm telling you, the sauce, the things that's going to help you the most is understanding where those fish live and where they behave and where they go.